Hey and welcome back everyone to today's video all about the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 770. Being released in May of 2013, this particular GPU is the Palette Jetstream 4GB version. It revolves around the Kepler architecture on the 28 nanometer process, also using a 256 bit memory bus. And it also has a TDP of 230 watts. So, let's have a look at the, how this card performs using a suite of benchmarks and games. First benchmark up is Unigine Heaven. At the Ultra preset, running at 1080p, we see the average FPS is at 37, with a 1% low of 18. Turning down the settings to its bare minimum, we see a huge 388% uplift in FPS, with this coming in at a 180. We also see a 1% low of 19 frames per second. When we turn the resolution down to 720p, and the settings back up to Ultra, we see the average at 65 FPS, which in turn is a 76% increase over the higher resolution frame rate at the higher settings. On the lower settings, the average is 212, a modest increase of 18%, over the higher resolution at the same settings. So, at least in heaven, there are merits to lowering the settings and or the resolution. Next up is Unigine Valley. At ultra settings at 1080p, the average is 43 FPS with the 1% low of just 7. Oh my. Reducing the settings to the lowest improves the FPS to 107 an increase of 149% over the ultra setting. With the 1% lows at 11 frames per second, a small improvement, although it's still bad. Going to 720p with the ultra preset sees the average FPS at 81, an 88% improvement over the same settings at the higher resolution. The 1% low remains frustratingly low at 11 FPS. Lowering the settings down to the minimum sees an average FPS of 110, a 36% increase over the higher resolution at the lower settings. The 1% low is still 11 FPS, which made me wonder if it was the setup. But as you will see from now on, the 1% lows are a lot higher. So with that in mind, going over to Unigine Superposition at 1080p, with high and medium settings, we see a result of 37 FPS. With the 1% lows at 29 FPS. See, I told you they got better. Reducing the settings to the lowest sees a 130% increase in the average FPS coming in at 85. And the 1% lows increased by 124% to 65 FPS. Reducing the screen size down to 720p at high and medium settings, we see an average FPS of 60 an increase of 62% over the 1080p score at the same settings. With the 1% low of 44, again an increase of 52%. And finally reducing the settings down to the lowest, scores an average FPS of 115, which is an increase of 35% over the higher resolution and the 1% lows come in at 87 FPS with an increase of 34%. 
So it seems like the 1% lows are back on track, which leads me to believe it's the fault of the first two benchmarks. That's what I think, so if anybody out there knows any different, leave a comment and let me know. Going on over to MSI Combustor and the Fermark benchmark. No settings to play with here, just two different resolutions. So at 1080p we see an average FPS at 51 with a 1% low of 48. And at 720p we see an average of 92 FPS and the 1% low at 87 FPS which is an increase of 80% and 81% respectively over the higher resolution. Staying with combustor and going over to test mark with the X32 benchmark, at 1080p we see the average FPS at 62 and the 1% low at 60. And over to 720p we see the average coming in at 68 and the 1% low at 66. So small improvements of 10% on both metrics over the higher resolution there. But I hear you cry, we don't play benchmarks on our PC, we play games. So with that in mind, let's see what CSGO has to offer. With the high settings at 1080p, an average of 178 FPS, which is really respectable for an older GPU like this, even if CSGO can run on a potato. With the 1% lows coming in at 73 FPS. Shunting the resolution down to 720, with the same setting sees a strange result with the average FPS being 179, which is the same as 1080p. But stranger, the 1% lows coming at 48, which is a decrease of 34. I did run this a few times and got similar results, so the higher resolution is the way to go if you can. Next up is Rocket League. Using the performance settings at 1080p, the average comes in at 223 FPS and the 1% lows are 101. Moving on down to 720p sees an increase this time but only a small one with the average being 236 FPS and the 1% lows being 124 which sees an improvement of 6% and 23% respectively. And the pattern of strangeness continues with GTA 5. At a high resolutions at 1080p bringing home a result of 30 FPS on average and the 1% lows of 28. But reducing the resolution to 720p sees a performance hit with the average FPS being 25 and the 1% lows being 24. A decrease of 17% and 14% on both metrics at this resolution. I did run these tests again with similar results. However, this is future me talking now. I worked out that I had VSync on half instead of disabled, which limited the frame rate to 30. So if I had to turn that off, it would have been better results, but I didn't, and I don't have the card anymore, so, you know, there you go. What can you do? But from now on, that's not going to be the case, so stay tuned. So that was the GTX 774GB Jetstream from Pallet. And what a mixed bag indeed. It performed well enough on the esports titles tested here, but struggled a bit when playing more demanding games. But here's the million dollar question. If you own this GPU now and want to upgrade, should you? Well, I don't know. That's not for me to answer, that's for you. But what I would say is that given the current climate of July 2021, I would stick with this rather than paying way over the top prices be it new or second hand for a newer card or even an older better card 
I could stand to lose some of the pretty high settings for the more frame rates. After all, you don't generally stop and admire the graphics in the middle of a game. So it depends on the types of games you want to play. If you want to play the latest AAA games, then this isn't for you. It just isn't powerful enough and doesn't have enough VRAM. So many newer games won't even start and you'll have to stump up the dough for the better solution. So, with that revelation, I really hope you enjoyed this journey back in time to re revisit this GPU. And if you did, toss me a like. And if you did have any comments or suggestions, then leave them down below. And consider subscribing to see more content like this. And I'll see you next time.